The equation for variance is based on an expected value. So if we have our variable, random variable x, and we're looking to calculate its variance, we would take the expected value of x minus its mean, right, minus the expected value of that, of that variable, squared. Now, that seems a little intimidating. Right? What's going on here? What does this all mean? Well, you can understand, begin to appreciate this a bit more if we actually look at an, uh, an actual distribution first and try to make some sense out of it. So let's go back to our favorite distribution that we're modeling off of the speeds, the speeds of vehicles that are passing under the highway that you took with the radar gun and sampling all of the speeds of the cars on the highway. We know that based on our prior definition, we can, we're modeling this as a normal distribution. We said that the mean was 60, that's mu. And so the variance represents the expected value of the random variable minus its mean squared. What is that saying? That's saying that this number is, so let's look at this number and see what things would make it go up versus make it go down. The actual number itself is not that important, but what it means and why this will calculate variance is very important. What this is saying is that if you look at this equation and you pick any point on this curve, you want to look at the distance between that point and its mean, take the difference between those two, square it, and then multiply that by how likely that point is to show up. Right? This is also equal to, in a, for a discrete case, for a discrete case, this is the same as the following equation. It's the sum of all the values that you can take on in your random variable with times the probability that your variable is that value multiplied by this inner this inner term the value of the variable at that at that index minus mu squared right this is based on the definition of expected value because expected value is whatever is inside here times the probability uh, of that thing across the range of the of the random variable and so now we can make a little more sense of what this is saying, because these two are equivalent, especially if we're looking at a discrete variable. What we're saying is that for every single value that, that our random variable could take on, we're going to take the probability that we're at that location, right? So these are going to have much lower impact on our variance than these. And then we're going to multiply that probability based on how far away we are from the mean, but squared. And that's it. That's what variance is. And suddenly it makes a lot of sense, a lot of sense why things that have, if it's talking about a normal distribution, when these, when the data gets pushed out more, if this grows wider, if this goes here and that goes there, then your variance is gonna grow because you have more data out here that's relative, that's further away from the mean. Similarly, if all the data gets pushed in, Right? If the data gets pushed in towards the mean, then the variance is going to go down. Now you might say, well, okay, well, why is it that we're calculating it with this squared? Well, there's another way that we could just do this. I don't want to deal with the squared term. That, that's confusing. Wouldn't it be easier just to calculate the absolute value, right? The, dis the raw distance away you are from any of these data points from the mean and just use that? And you could say, well, isn't that an interesting and maybe better way to think about think about 
uh, the variance. And you could say, well, how about we take instead an equation that looks something like this, the expected value of x minus mu. And we do the absolute value of that so that we don't end up canceling things out when we're crossing on one side of the one side of mu versus the other. Wouldn't this be a better uh, expression for variance? Well, it turns out this actually has a name. This is called the mean absolute deviation. And it is also a measure of how spread out data is. But we don't use this one as commonly. There's been debates in the historical math literature of whether using this one or this one term is better for the, for the measure of something, how spread out data is. And there were some old arguments as to why this is better because it better models things that happen in nature sort of because, of the, because a lot of things are, are normally distributed. Uh, but in reality, it's just a choice. You can pick this one or this one and they're both valid ways to describe how spread out data is. The reason, the, the mathematical reason though that variance is much more popular is that when you get into multi-dimensional statistics and you're looking at not one variable but lots of variables and how the individual variables are random variables are, are changing and how the random variables are changing with respect to other random variables then this becomes much more natural variance believe it or not is a is a more specific form of a general a more general idea called covariance now we're not going to go into the details here but covariance is how one random variable covaries with another, whether they are moving together, changing together, and changing not together. The higher the covariance, the tighter two variables change together. The smaller the covariance, the less. When, when two variables have a covariance of zero, they are, they are independent of each other. They're moving without any relationship to each other. The covariance is a more general term. And it turns out that the covariance of X with respect to itself is actually the variance of X. This property will be extremely useful when doing multi-dimensional uh, multi statistics. And it explains very naturally why there's a squared term here in variance because you are taking the expression for covariance is just the, the, the the spread of the one variable minus its mean times the spread of the other variable minus mean. The details we'll get into later, but when you, you can see that then when you take the covariance of the same variable with respect to itself, of a variable with respect to itself, you end up multiplying those two together and you're getting the variance. That is the mathematics behind variance in the equation. It's discrete form and there's also an analog for the continuous form, which we just won't talk about here. And why we're using variance and not mean absolute deviation.